this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and we're trying something new for 2017. Besides the fact that we have 4K resolution now available, look down there, 4K, yeah, cool, right? So I, I do a lot of reviews, obviously, a lot of comparisons, smartphones, tablets, laptops, cameras. Well, I don't tell you guys what's coming up, what's next, because that's not what we're about. But why aren't we? Because this would help you make informed decisions. If you know, just because I read all the press releases, I talk to the manufacturers, I go to the trade shows, it's all in my head. I realize that you guys don't know it and you gals too. So we're going to cover when there's something interesting, five minutes on tech and cover it. Well, of course, this is CES, the trade show in Las Vegas that happens every year for consumer technology. And this year there is a lot of stuff to talk about. So I'm going to talk about what's up, upcoming and whether you should be excited or a little cautious, that sort of thing. So let's get started. First with the Dell XPS 13 convertible. That is exciting, isn't it? Dell marketing department actually got a clue finally. The XPS 13 has been the best thing ever for them and rightly so. I mean, this is a beautiful laptop with the infinity near bezel-less display. Everybody wants one. It's super small, it's super light, yet you get full Intel Core i5, i7 CPUs inside, uh, even Core i3. So why not go with that Halo branding and finally make a convertible that's based on this and it will look just about exactly the same except for it'll have the 360 degree hinges instead of the conventional hinge here. So for those of you who really like the XPS but you wanted to have the convertible design which you know makes sense windows touch screens all that sort of thing it's there for you and it's a good improvement because the Dell XPS 12 was a really successful tablet convertible 360 degree hinge easel hinge design years and years ago and since then Dell has kind of struggled they've had XPS 11s they've done weird designs with keyboards never really took off. I think this one's going to do well, but one thing to be aware of, not just that it starts at $100 more, that's $999 versus $899 for your regular XPS 13, is the fact it uses basically the Intel Core M 7th generation CPU. Now, Core M has become a dirty word because it's associated with less powerful nowadays. So Intel said, hey, let's call it the Core Y, because it was always the Core M Y dash something or other. Anyway, don't be fooled, it's still that same 4.5 watt dual core CPU versus the 15 watt Ultrabook CPU. So fanless also, but less powerful. But part of the naming is it can be a Core i5-Y something or other. So you're gonna get fooled. Really look at the specs closely when you're buying a laptop this year, because if you want a full Core i5 or Core i7, you know, you can't make do with the Core M level of performance. You gotta look at those specs. And speaking of that, the XPS 13 convertible will be running on the Intel Core Y 4.5 watt CPU. So it will be less powerful than the XPS 13. It'll also be quiet and fanless. One could say that makes sense, but just keep that in mind. So because there's so much going on at CES, this might be more like 10 minutes on tech this time in future episodes. And we'll do them when there's actually stuff happening. Some months, like in the summer, not much is going on. Well, now there's more going on. The next is Intel 7th generation KB Lake CPUs. They were already out for Ultrabooks, again, like the XPS 13, the Lenovo Yoga 910 that we just reviewed, all those. Well, now it's out for desktops and for quad core 45 watt CPU laptops. That means gaming laptops, the XPS 15, all of those refreshes have been announced. Now, there's not a huge jump in performance here lately. Intel just doesn't with the CPU, so 2-3% performance improvement. The Intel integrated graphics are where the greater performance leap is. But for a lot of quad-core laptops, your gaming laptops, your mobile workstations, you're using dedicated graphics, so it doesn't matter so much. So it's nice to see if you just bought yourself an Alienware and a Seuss Rogue for Christmas, it's okay. You're not really losing anything with, by not having KB Lake inside. But if you do happen to be in the market, it's always nice to have the latest generation, so there's that. And by the way, if you gaming laptop people, if your hubby or your wife has just said, oh my God, you spent $2,000 on a gaming laptop, or if you want to, Acer with the Predator 21X has given you the perfect retort. They have the curved screen, high spec Predator 21X, 21 inch screen laptop for $8,999. Yeah, $8,999. <laughs> Enough said. Next up, Lenovo, of course, they're refreshing a bunch of ThinkPads. They're usually not that fast, refreshing the ThinkPads. So we saw the consumer model yogas actually getting KB Lake dual core 15 watt CPUs before some of the ThinkPads. 
And again, because it doesn't make a huge difference, but these do rely on integrated graphics. There'll be a little bit, up to even 10% boost in integrated graphics performance. The ThinkPad X series is getting KB like That means this X1 Yoga with OLED, with IPS, whichever you want, the X1 Carbon, and the ThinkPad X1 tablet all getting updated. Speaking of Lenovo, they're also updating their gaming laptops. You remember the Y-series gaming laptops before Dell started eating their lunch for the affordable gaming laptop with their Inspiron 15 Gamer? They kind of have lost direction in the last couple of years. The build quality wasn't fantastic, but the price kept kind of going up. So being a really, really affordable gaming laptop with good specs wasn't so much there. They're trying to redo everything now. They're going to have Pascal 10 series graphics cards. You're going to have your 1050 cards available, your 1060 cards available. So they've got a new line and they're calling it Legion. We'll see how they do with it. Maybe they can take the crown back from Dell. Speaking of Dell, there is indeed finally a refresh of the Dell Inspiron Gamer 15. We really like the 7559 from last year, and it's finally been updated with NVIDIA GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti cards. Uh, Lenovo and they are both going to be offering the Ti for a little extra performance. KB Lake inside, of course, but the real exciting thing is starting price of $799, and it doesn't look like complete trash. I think it's going to be really great. I was pretty excited by the last one, and this one I think is going to be pretty nice too. In terms of build quality looks and the specs you get for the money, it was pretty unbeatable. For the crazy, mad, thin, and light laptop people, the LG Gram. Now, we've reviewed the Gram before, and it does get a little better with each generation. And we're going to have a 13-inch, a 14-inch, and a 15-inch coming up all around, well, one kilogram or a little bit less which is about 2.1 pounds or so. So that's nothing new, but the same thing, 1080p display. You get a fingerprint scanner, that's nice on it too. No touchscreen because that adds weight and detracts from battery life, but they're claiming now they finally got battery life down. That was never their claim to fame. Now they're saying like 21 hours of battery life. Yeah, right. You have Intel Core i5, i7, i3, KB Lake CPUs, not the Y slash M series and a 60 watt hour battery. So I'll believe that when I see it, but if, even if they get it into ballpark matching other Ultrabooks, it'll be pretty impressive given how thin and light and powerful they are. Now in the world of cameras, there's a Nikon D5600. That's an APS-C digital SLR camera. So it's uh, you know mid-level. It's about 799 with a 15 to 55 millimeter lens. And it's been out in Japan for a while. So people are waiting to see it here. The big one with that is the whole pick bridge, make it easy to transfer your photos straight to your smartphone kind of thing. More exciting, and we've been waiting a lot longer for this, is the Panasonic Lumix GH5. There was a time several years ago when many tech YouTubers used the GH4 because it was pretty ahead of its time for a very high video quality. It looks like a SLR camera, but it shoots really fantastic video. It's a micro four-thirds sensor still, but it's gone up to 20.3 megapixels, and it shoots 4K at 60 frames per second. If you notice, we have... 4K at 30 frames per second, like pretty much every YouTube channel, like pretty much every camera. So that is pretty special. Also shoots high quality video, 10-bit ProRes format, that sort of thing. The only price is the two, problem is the price, $2,000. I think a lot of people are probably going to think about the Sony A7S II instead in that price range where you get full frame, amazing low light, all that sort of thing. I think Panasonic is pricing themselves a little bit out of the market there. So there you have it. That's our first five minutes on tech, which might be more than five minutes, like I said, this time, but probably in the future it will be shorter because it won't be CES with so much going on. Hope you found it informative, give you an idea of what's coming and how some products might be really awesome sounding, but there are a couple of caveats, like that XPS 13 convertible. It doesn't have full Intel Core i CPUs, whereas something like the Dell Inspiron Gamer is forever seeming like one of the best deals out there in affordable gaming laptops. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and more reviews and more smackdowns and all the good stuff.